Welcome to the Glass Packaging Fundamentals 101 presentation brought to you by the Glass Packaging Institute known as GPI. GPI is a trade organization representing the North American glass container industry. GPI promotes glass as an optimal packaging choice, advances environmental and recycling policies, advocates industry standards, and educates packaging professionals. In this Glass Container 101 presentation, we'll cover brief history of glass containers, characteristics of glass, raw materials needed to produce glass containers, why recycling is so important, glass color options, and how glass containers are manufactured with a short video at the end of the presentation. This is the average US glass container shipments by category. You'll note here that beer is the largest consumer of glass containers in North America. It's also worthy to note that 80% of the glass container shipments are for some type of a beverage. Brief history on glass containers starts out about 3500 BC in ancient Egypt where we find small glass beads. 1600 BC, uh, some vessels were found that were actually hollowed out, made out of glass. And somewhere between 27 BC and 14 AD, the Syrians discovered glass could be blown using a blowpipe. The first glass factory in North America was in Jamestown, Virginia in 1608. And then in 1903, Michael Owens out of Toledo, Ohio invented the first automatic bottle blowing machine. This would be a typical glass house where the glass blowers would be actually blowing the glass into containers. A good glass blower could produce somewhere between eight or nine bottles per hour. After Michael Owens invented the automatic bottle blowing machine, the amount of glass bottles being produced was as high as eight bottles per minute. So it was a revolutionary change in its time. Talk a little bit now about the characteristics of glass. Glass is a molecular structure of a liquid. It has a physical characteristics of a solid. It is a non-crystalline solid with a random molecular structure. Glass is a liquid that solidifies without crystallizing. If you look at the molecules here of a solid crystalline, you'll see how they're all locked together to form a nice tight bond or a solid material. If you look at glass, you'll see here a random pattern, open-ended structure of the molecules. That's why we say glass is not a true solid. We know that the smoothing of the viscosity increases as the glass cools. It has no true melting or freezing point. Glass again is a liquid that can solidify without crystallizing. The basic raw materials to make up glass containers consist of silica sand, soda ash, limestone, and some minor ingredients like aluminum. Another important part of making glass containers is using as much recycled glass as we can obtain. There's two ways to resource this recycled glass. First of all, it would be from our plant collet or glass that simply didn't meet the quality standards would be ground up, reused and made into new glass containers. The other source would be what we call post-consumer. This is through the recycled centers throughout the country where we can purchase the recycled glass, melt it down and make new containers. Our furnaces can utilize anywhere between 15 to 90% of this collet or recycled glass. And some of the key benefits of this is it's 100% reusable. We can melt the glass, make new bottles over and over again, which is called closed loop production. We also have lower energy usage and reduce carbon dioxide levels. We can reduce our raw material consumption that we have to buy on the open market. Typical glass container composition 
would consist mostly of silica sand between 68 and 73%, followed by soda ash, limestone, and the minor ingredients. Some of the minor ingredients that we use, we have a, what we call fining agents. We have decolorizers and colorizers that we use in our batch in our furnaces. The fining agents, we use sulfate and carbon. What this does is that helps clean the glass and rid it of the bubbles that are created in the melting process. We wanna get the bubbles out of there so we make strong containers. We also wanna make as clear glass as possible for some of our customers. To do that, we have to add iron and selenium to the batch so that the naked eye, it appears to be clear or what we call flint glass in the industry. We have customers that want a clear as glass as possible if they're putting something like pickles, uh, tomato sauces, vodkas, gins, they want the clarity to come through so the consumer can see the product. We have different ranges of glass colors. The glass colors itself, uh, of course, on the one end is the flint or clear glass. The mid range of, of greens are used for more type beverage type containers. The darker greens are used for wine containers. And of course, amber is used for primarily in the beer market. The lower level that you see here on glass containers are more specialty glass colors. And most of those are for uh, some of the spirits industries that they uh, put the liquor items in. Except for the cobalt blue, you'll note that uh, is also used in the beer segment and also on the wine market today. To get blue, we simply use a cobalt oxide. To, uh, it can vary the blue color simply by adding or reducing the amount of cobalt uh, oxide that we use. We also can make uh, different colors such as smoke, turquoise, peach, or purple simply by uh, adjusting the different oxide compositions to, to get obtain these new colors. The inherent qualities of glass make it the best choice of packaging of all kinds for food and beverages. Glass is 100% natural, it's 100% recyclable, non-toxic, safe, and pure. Glass tastes like while there is no taste with glass, glass containers are non-porous and impermeable, so there are no inner reactions between the glass packaging and the content product that would affect the flavor of the food or beverage placed in them. 90% of consumers favor glass because it preserves the taste or flavor of the food or the beverage it contains. Glass requires no chemical liner that can interact with food or beverages to alter the taste. Now we're gonna walk through uh, the making of glass containers, the manufacturing process. It all starts with the batch house. This is where the raw materials are stored, weighed, and mixed and moved and set into the furnace for melting. In the furnace, the raw materials are melted about 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit. The capacity of the furnace because can vary anywhere for up to 350 tons. The depth of the molten glass has to be kept at about 60 inches at all times. A life of a furnace will be anywhere from 10 to 14 years. And to rebuild that furnace is gonna run somewhere between eight to $10 million. We do use natural gas. We have backup of fuel oil, electric and propane in, in case it's needed. From the furnace itself, then it goes into what we call a forehouse. These are long channels of glass that are moved from the furnace over, out over into the glass blowing machines down below. This allows the glass to cool to about 2,100 degrees. It's all gravity fed. And at the end of these channels, there is a feeder. This feeder actually rotates to mix the glass for a consistent temperature. 
Uh, the glass flow is controlled by the height of the plunger and the opening or opening of the tube at the bottom. There's a pumping action that actually pushes the glass out of the end where these cutoff shears come in and cut the glass into gobs. This is a video that will show you how this operation works. It pushes glass through the orifice. After the glass goes through the orifice, it is cut by shear blades at just the precise instant to form an elongated cylinder of molten glass called a gob. Each gob is used to make one container. The height of the tube, the stroke of the plunger, the size of the orifice, and the frequency of the shear cut all determine the size of the gob, and therefore the size and weight of the resulting container. Gob weights are controlled to a few hundredths of an ounce. Okay, from there, once the gobs are sheared, it goes through a delivery chute and actually drops the gobs of glass down from the furnace level down into the glass blowing machine or the molds down below. And this next video will show this operation uh, in. Each gob first falls into a scoop, which directs the gob on the correct path to a specific mold. The gob slides through a trough into a deflector and then into the first of two molds on the forming machine. Okay, the forming machine is actually on the street level and it will consist of anywhere from six to 12 sections. Uh, there can be one to four cavities per section. It's called an individual suction machine or an IS machine. The nice part about this is you can shut one section down repair the molds, put new molds on, and the remaining part of the machine will continue to operate. The speed ranges from anywhere from 40 to 1,000 bottles per minute. And we have three different machine processes that we use. This here, uh, there is no video of this, so I will narrate. This is the backside of a, of a glass blowing machine. The gobs of glass will drop down once they're sheared into what we call a blank mold. The air comes on, it preforms that gob of glass, flips it 180 degrees over into the front of the machine, which you're seeing here, where the mold opens up the bottles, uh, the air comes on, compresses the bottle into the shape of the mold. Once the mold opens up, the takeout lifts the bottles out of the mold and sets them on the conveying line, okay? From here, the bottles will go to what we call an annealing layer. This is a, a long oven. It reheats the bottles up to about 1100 degrees Fahrenheit and slowly cools them down to room temperature. What we're doing here is we have to equalize the temperature of the bottles inside and outside so it can strengthen the bottles. If we didn't do this, the bottles would not meet our quality standards. From here, we go to an automatic inspection equipment. The lines where all bottles go through, any bottle that doesn't make our quality standard grade will simply be rejected, ground up, remelded, and made into a new bottle. Once the bottles pass the inspection, they go to our loading areas where they can be placed in cartons or bulk palletizing and shipped on to our customers. In the glass industry, we, we call bottles different, different parts of the bottles. We have names for them, such as the top of the bottle is where the threaded part is or the, or the closure goes is called a finish. From there, you have a neck, you have a base of neck, shoulder, body, heel, or bottom. And it's just terminology used within the industry to describe the different parts of the containers themselves. Glass is a sustainable package. It protects the product, it extends the shelf life, and it maintains true taste. It protects the environment, 100% recyclable forever over and over again. Recycled glass helps reduce our energy consumption and also the CO2 levels. And most of all, it protects you and I, the consumer, because there are no a protective coatings inside that could leach chemicals into the product. It is one of the only packaging materials 
that the FDA has graded as grass generally regarded as safe. Now you'll see a video of glass containers actually being produced in the glass plant. Glass, it is fire and sand. For 5,000 years, people have been making glass. It is as important to modern life today as it ever was. Glass is the purest packaging material. It protects the flavors of the product. From glass, the last taste is always as good as the first. Inherently natural and infinitely recyclable, glass also protects our world. But perhaps it is its simple beauty that most inspires our endless fascination with glass. Its beauty and the unlimited potential for creativity that glassmaking offers. Here at OI, we have perfected the craft of glassmaking over the course of generations. Since our founder, Michael J. Owens, invented the automatic bottle machine in 1903, we have taken large-scale glass craftsmanship to the world. We begin here, silica sand, soda ash, and limestone. Recycled glass from consumers, or cullet, is added, on average making up nearly 40% of the mix. In some places, 70%. And we bring it here. 2,850 degrees Fahrenheit. Hotter than molten lava. This is the furnace. In a typical furnace, 10 tons of glass are formed every hour. The furnace feeds the refiner with a river of liquid glass. Here the glass must be carefully processed. Getting the consistency and temperature just right is what makes a perfect bottle. The molten glass is ready. Measured and precisely sheared, gobs of glass are fired into the forming machines. Caught by the machines, the gobs are delivered into the molds. Two times, air is fired into the mold, expanding and sculpting the glass. Many shapes and many sizes. Across OI, we create 5 million bottles every hour, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The machines never sleep. Warm but not yet finished, the bottles enter the leer. Carefully they are reheated, then very slowly cooled to room temperature, releasing stresses. The new bottles emerge strong and durable. bottles are tested and tested again for quality. Strength, size, shape and colour. Every bottle must be just right. All the time under the watchful eyes of OI technicians. Experts in glass making. When we find imperfections, the bottles go back into the furnace. For them, the journey begins again. of 1,000 bottles, packed and ready for customers, expertly crafted by OI, ready to bring foods and beverage brands we love to life. For wines, beers, spirits, juices and more, every container delivering the product exactly as intended. And this is only the beginning. At OI, we are leading the way 
innovating, developing the next generation of glass packaging for businesses and consumers. Beautiful, iconic, the most sustainable package on earth. The possibilities in glass are endless. As the world's leading expert in glass packaging, marrying the art and science of glass, we honor the glass making tradition that's more than 5,000 years old. At OI, we create modern packaging that's good for the oceans, good for the planet, good for our health. And we are proud to lead the way in glass for centuries to come. Thank you for viewing the presentation. To learn more about GPI, just go to www.gpi.org, chooseglass.com, or glassrecycles.org. Thank you.